Hi, my name is Anthony Ward and welcome to this tutorial for 3D World Magazine. What we're going to look at over the course of the next few videos is basically taking the scene that you can see in front of you and adding some weather and watery effects to it. Now to do this we're going to look at two main systems. First we'll look at using end particles to add the rain into the scene and then next we will look at using Bifrost which is Mayer's new uh, dynamic fluid system uh, and we'll use that to simulate as she's running she's splashing through puddles um, and uh, Bifrost is perfect for that sort of effect so we'll look at that uh, as well. Um, so this is the scene that we're starting out with and you're probably wondering that it looks quite different to the main render. There's a lot of elements missing, particularly the background. Uh, there should be a bridge in there um, and other things. What I've done with, like I do with most of my tutorials, is I've stripped down the scene just to make it a lot lighter, uh, easier to work with, um, just so then we can focus on the key elements of the tutorial. We're not distracted or bogged down by anything else in the background. If you like, you can build your own elements in the background. That's entirely up to you. Uh, but what I've done is I've just left in the main elements so that we can focus on the rain and the puddle. So let's start off by looking at the rain. So as I mentioned, we're going to use N particles to create the, way, the rain system. Um, I'm just going to click Control and Space just to go back. So here's our Maya UI. You'll notice lots of things are in... Uh, some handy layers already just so that we can uh, make things visible, invisible, you know, just as we're working. Now I'm going to go to the perspective view. So here we have our character running along, just looking up at the sky. We already have some uh, watery effects on her, and this is just basically a normal map and a specular map which has been added onto the character just onto her main body just to give that extra little bit of effect of the rain running down her body so let's look at adding rain now we're, as I said we're going to use end particles so we're going to go to the end particles min menu create end particles and we're going to create a new emitter now we want an emitter because we want um, we want to define an object where the particles are going to be coming from um, and rather than selecting an object which you can we could create an object and use emit from object but for in this instance we want to create a cube which the rain is contained inside as well so create emitter just make this a bit smaller reset the settings there we go so let's give this emitter a name and we'll just call it rain emitter. Now I'm going to change it to a volume because I know I want a cube that the rain is going to be inside. We don't want the rain to just be uh, unlimited going off into the distance. We want it contained. We can always add in more rain if we feel we need it in the post processing. So everything else here is fine volume shape is cube which is fine um, and I think I think we'll just leave that as it is now I'm tempt I did pause there because I'm tempted to uh, enable this here so that when the uh, particles leave the cube they disappear so this will be handy for processing um, it'll speed things up and uh, obviously you don't want to be playing around with or rendering particles that aren't actually visible. So actually let's check that. Click create. Now nothing's immediately obvious. So if I press W and go into translate mode we can lift this up and this is what's being created. If I open up the outliner we have our emitter, we have our particle object and we have the nucleus. The nucleus basically is the dynamic systems which are going to be affecting the uh, the particles. So look, let's go back to selecting our emitter and I'm just going to scale this up. As you can see we've got our cube shape. So if you remember the rain is going to be restricted to being inside this cube. 
Now I'm just going to drop this down so it's just perhaps sitting just underneath the floor. We'll centre it on her. Maybe make it a bit bigger. Something like that. So now we have our emitter. If I close this down. So if I click play now, we can see all these particles starting to appear. Now they're moving a bit slowly, and that's because we've got this N hair system in the scene as well. So I'm just going to disable that, well not disable, I'm just going to turn that off. And what you should see now is it's moving a lot faster. The problem is it's looking a bit more like snow than it is rain. So now we can, we've got the particles in there, we can start to play around with the look um, and just how uh, how they're actually moving. What we can also do is if you notice the time slider is set to 530 and as soon as it hits that it's restarting so just so we've got room to breathe and play around we'll just up that to 10,000. I'm going to go into the attribute editor And with the emitter selected, I'm going to end particle shape here. And I'm running out of uh, space a little bit on here, so you'll have to bear with me. Now, under the end cloth, rather than clicking play down here, I'm going to activate interactive playback. And that just allows me to, while this is playing, I can come into the particle shape here and I can play around with these effects and it'll update instantly in here. So if we scrub, scrub right down to shading, this is what the particles are currently being rendered as, and that's points. So if we change that to streak, and zoom in, you can see that has changed, but now, now this is a slight problem, we are going to have to actually stop it, just so that the menu updates, and then we'll carry on. So because we changed that to streak, we've got these new options and we have tail size so if I just make that bigger as you can see we have lots of big streaks we can even invert it but we could set it to something like 15 and that's looking a bit more like raindrops now they're moving a bit slow and not in the right direction just yet but we're starting to get elements in that we can start playing with now we're going to enable depth sort and we're also going to use the lighting and they're handy for when we come to render the lighting in the scene will affect the uh, actual raindrops as well another option rather than using streak is to use a tube and again I'll just stop it so the menu is updated let's go back to the beginning and as you can see these are like the streaks, but they're actually just tubes, and we've got radius one and radius two. And we can adjust those so we can get a lot more dramatic raindrops if that's the sort of look you're after. Again, you've got your tail size. So let's just go back to streak for now and leave that as it is. So we've got the rain falling, it's looking a bit more like rain, but we want the wind to be blowing into her face. So now we can go to our nucleus and in here you can see we've got all our dynamic properties that we can play around with we have gravity the direction of the gravity wind direction all sorts of elements like that now at the moment the wind isn't doing anything and that was just set so that the wind would be blowing in the x direction so looking at the scene we want it to be blowing minus z because we want the rain to be going slanting backwards. So let's set that to minus one. At the moment again it's still not doing anything so let's increase the wind speed like so. As you can see now the rain is now falling towards her so the wind's blowing it into her face. So then we can play around with those to get the rain looking how we want, flowing in the direction we want it to go in. And because we enabled the uh, checkbox when we created it for these to die on emission, nothing 
is surviving outside of the actual volume, outside of the actual emitter, which again is good for performance. If we're rendering her quite close up like this, we've got the rain there, we're not interested in what's happening off the screen. So we've created the main emitter, we've adjusted the, uh, the wind and the basic look of the rain. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this video here and in the next one we'll continue on but what we'll look at is adding another particle system so that when the rain hits the character or hits the floor it actually explodes into raindrops uh, as rain would. So we'll leave this here and we'll continue in the next video.